Welcome to the Veterinary Marketing Podcast, where it's all about how to attract, engage, and retain clients to your veterinary hospital using digital marketing. My name is Brandon Bershears. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. In today's episode, episode 239, we are going to be talking about the things that you absolutely should have set up and the order that you should have them set up so that you can have effective marketing. And I think this is going to be what I'm trying to do with this series, and I'm going to break down each one of these steps in this series, is that I want to make it so that you can have actionable steps that's going to dramatically improve the marketing that you're doing. It doesn't matter if it's social media marketing, organic marketing, content marketing. It doesn't matter if you're doing paid ads, any of that. Um, this is going to be a very specific set of instructions that are going to help you to make sure that you're getting everything that you possibly can out of the marketing that you do. And it's going to help whatever you're doing to dramatically improve in results. So I think it's going to be really effective, and I'm trying to just make it as simple as possible. Initially, when I set up this list, and I'll tell you a little bit about it in just a second here, but when I set up this list, I created this thing. If I said, what should every practice be doing? And it was like 20 things long, and I said, there's too many things. So I narrowed it down to the six crucial things that you should be doing so that your marketing is really, really effective. And obviously, we'll talk about other things that are things that you can add on top of this, which will help. But this is the bare minimum, in my opinion. And it's going to be this, just the stuff that's going to drive return for you. So again, this is going to be, I think, tremendously valuable for you. Before we begin, just a couple of things. First, if you haven't done so already, be sure to head on over to the Veterinary Marketing Nerds Facebook group. If you need help with anything, it's a great place to ask for help and things like that. And the second thing I want to mention is if you're not busy right now, if you have openings in the schedule please reach out to me. I have a fix for this. If you're interested in working with me to help fill your schedule, we can absolutely do that. I'm limiting the number of clients that I'm taking on so that I can give everybody the time and attention that they need. So if you're a current client, congrats, you are one of the limited people. Um, But if you're not a current client, be sure to head on over to veterinarymarketingpodcast.com forward slash work with Brandon. That's one word, all continuous work with Brandon. All right. Let's jump into today's episode. So breaking down marketing into its most basic, most fundamental steps, I think there are really six things that we need to focus on so that we can drive response. This is just going to be the practical stuff that's going to help you to drive return. And there's a specific sequence to it, in my opinion. Okay, so this is all just set up to be extremely, extremely practical. It's not going to be super... You know, fancy or technical, just simple, okay? Very, very simple. So the steps, and I'm going to lay them out first, and then we're going to go through each one individually and talk about that in a little bit more depth. If you have some of these steps set up, fantastic. You don't have to do that step, or you can visit it and see what's working, what's not working, and get things working better. So the first thing that you need to have set up is analytics, and that might surprise you. But if you don't know what's happening, you don't know why you're successful, you don't know why you're failing, it doesn't serve you to do more marketing because you're just guessing. And basically, if things are working, you're getting lucky and you're not able to figure out why things are working. Uh, There's a quote, I forget who said it, but it's better to um, understand why you failed than get lucky and be successful. Because if you understand why you failed, you're going to be able to learn from that and move forward. So once you have analytics set up, you need to have a system for generating customers and clients and lead flow. Because if you don't have new clients coming in the business, it doesn't matter if it's organic, through Google My Business, through social posts, through ads, whatever it is, referrals, you have to have a way to have clients coming in the door. And the analytics step helps you to understand where they're coming from, how they're getting there, what they do to interact once they're there, and things like that. The next thing that I think you need to have set up that 99% of practices do not do is email marketing. At least have it set up so that you can use it if you need to. The next setup that I have for you is text message marketing. I 100% think that every veterinary hospital should be doing text message marketing. Every single one. Again, I'm trying to distill this down to the basic stuff that's going to just drive tremendous revenue for you. The next thing after that, once you have those things set up, is a content strategy. So this is going to be your social media marketing, your blogs, whatever it is that you want to do that you think is going to serve your practice best, content marketing strategy. And then the last step, which is step number six, is testing and optimization. And that is the ongoing process to figure out what's working best, 
what you want to do in the future and things like that. So let's deep dive into each one of these. We're probably going to be making an episode here. But with analytics, you need to have Google Analytics set up. Uh, you need to have Google Tag Manager set up. You need to have goals and events set up. And then you need to understand how your traffic is getting there. There's three main ways to get a better understanding of your traffic and how your traffic is going to be interacting. Um, so traffic, for those of you who don't know, are the visitors to your site, and they can get to your site through different mediums. They can get there through organic, through Google My Business, through direct, through referral, through social media marketing, through paid advertising. And so it's incredibly important that you have those uh, distinct audiences segmented so that you can see how each traffic channel adds up and what's happening. We're definitely going to do an analytics um, episode because there's so much to talk about with it. G uh, Google Analytics 4 is coming out. I've been just tremendous, <laughs> tremendous focus on Google Analytics 4 because it came out and a few clients were using it. And I was like, oh man, I don't know what is going on here. I don't know how to use this. And so I was from a complete beginner standpoint because it is completely different. There's so many new cool things within Google Analytics 4. It's very, very exciting. And I think from a marketing standpoint of where... Google is going, how they're going to be basically implementing their data policies across all of their platforms, whether it's Google Analytics, Google My Business, YouTube, um, and Analytics, and Tag Manager, and all these really cool products that are starting to work really well together. It's really exciting, in my opinion. So you need to make sure Analytics is set up, and we'll talk more about that in the next episode about Analytics. Then we need customer and uh, or client and lead flow. So we need to have a steady stream of people who actually need and want what you have. And then on top of that, you also need to have a way to nurture and engage with people who might not know what they need. They might not know that about you and your practice. And so that's the lead flow, which um, you have to have a specific strategy for generating new, new leads. You need to have support system in place uh, so that you can capture those leads market to them and things like that. Uh, by the way, as all of these things build up, and I think that it's important to note that the sequence of this is important. First, you need to have analytics. So then you can understand what your cost per lead are, what your cost per client are, those kinds of metrics. Once you understand those metrics, we're going to be able to then add on to basically each one of these steps. So each step prior amplifies the results of the next step hope that makes sense. So the next thing that we need to have, and by the way, with customer and lead flow, that also includes understanding what your offers are, what are making your unique selling proposition actually unique, what is making your offers valuable, what is making your clients want to come in and be a client at your practice. So what are the actual things that are going to drive value? Once we have that, we need to set up email marketing. And if you can send emails on a regular basis, and I would say weekly emails is something that you need to be doing as a practice. The more frequently that you're going to send emails, the better your open rates and engagements are going to be. And um, I know that sounds weird, sounds counterintuitive. I would say that if you could send a couple times a week, that would be ideal, but I know that's not going to happen. So once a week, you can do it, okay? I know you can. The next thing is text message marketing. Text message marketing is incredibly important. Now, I'm saying all of these things because... There's just so much volatility within social channels and within SEO and all of these other mediums where you don't own it. And so you you don't have that stability in place that's going to really help you to consistently. If you had next week wasn't had any booked appointments, let's say, just as an example, let's say it got really slow. What would you do? You maybe put out social posts, but what if social channels were not being effective for you? What if there was algorithm changes that didn't let anybody see your posts? So having email marketing and then text message marketing and text is I think a lot more quick in terms of how you interact with people. If you take text messaging from the position of how you text with your friends and family and really set a good expectation and a good tone with that, you're going to be able to create great relationships with your potential clients and your clients. And there's a lot of really cool tools that we're going to talk about. Text message marketing, I think is even easier than email marketing because you don't have to write these long emails. It can be short and sweet to the point um, obviously be creative as possible. We'll talk about all those things, but it's going to help you to get a lot more out of your marketing. The next thing that we have to do is have content. So if we have content after all of these other pieces, 
content is hopefully going to drive more organic traffic, more engagement, more shares, more referrals. And so if all of these other systems are set up, they're going to be poised to capture as many leads and clients as possible so that you have a offer for them, so that you have a, a nurture path for them. You're going to be able to drive them into the practice. And then the content that you have and the content that you create is going to be exponentially more effective because you have all of these capture systems set up in place, right? And I hope that makes sense. And then the last step, testing and optimization. You should always be testing, always be optimizing and increasing what you're doing. So whether it's testing new mediums, testing new video formats, uh, content formats, whatever it is, always trying new things, testing, seeing what's working based on other industries, what people are doing, um, other content creators, other people in the space and then duplicating that success so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. Okay, all of these things stack up and compound so that you're going to get exponentially better results. Now, obviously, there's so much more that we could talk about here, but I think that these six things are going to really help to move the needle for your business, help you to really get effective marketing done, and it's just going to be a a really good series for you that's going to be quick and to the point. And so... Um, I don't want to take any more time. I just want to deliver value. So it's a little bit shorter of an episode today. But the the homework for you with this episode is to, number one, figure out what you have in place already. Do you have analytics in place? Do you have a a client and lead flow system in place? Do you have email marketing set up? Do you have text message marketing set up? Do you have a content strategy in place? And then what tests and optimization strategies have you been doing in the past? Maybe you have some of them. Maybe you have none. It doesn't matter. You just need to know first where you are today so that we can figure out how to improve and what steps are going to be most important for you to take. So be sure to subscribe in iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you get your podcast from. And if you have any questions, comments, need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day, everyone.